What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is Monday. It is June twentieth and Juneteenth observed. Juneteenth observed. And also, is it the longest day of the year? Or is that tomorrow? I have no idea. Or is that today? I don't know. I think it's the longest day of the year. I think it's like the uh, summer uh, solstice. Really? Yeah, dude. <laughs> The sun, you don't even, you don't pay attention to that? No, no. I feel like so much of my mood is affected by when the sun sets. So I have to, I have to maximize it. Oh yeah. Well, but it's not, it's not going to be a huge difference. I think the shortest day of the year is Christmas Eve, right? Or Or like December 21st, I think. Around that. Yeah. Which is six months from, is it six months from now? Six months from now. Probably. Yeah. Six months from tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been uh, trying to be outside as much as I can. I've been walking everywhere. Um, Which means in two days, days start getting shorter. Yeah. Which sucks not by that much though but little by little it's gonna start sucking like it starts getting bad yeah the winter here is dark yeah spring stops springing when you get out of the office at where like the yak ends at like two and it's already dark out <laughs> yeah, yeah it's fucking the terrifying. sun's already setting it doesn't feel really good at all now i need to start uh like i want to live in two places i feel like that'd be fucking sweet Living in like the south in the in the winter time and the north in the summer or some shit like that. Yeah, you gonna do that? I want to do that. I'm not going to yeah. because I don't follow through on any of the things that would make me truly happy, like stretching and meditating, and eating <laughs> healthy and exercising, and like having any type of discipline in my life at all. Yeah, but I want to do shit like that. Uh, that would be nice. Have two houses. <laughs> yeah, maybe go to the shore. Dude, at, remember at the beginning of fucking quarantine when people were just like migrant around? They were just like living in, they'd like live in an Airbnb here for like two mu- two like weeks and then they'd pop somewhere else. And Yeah, yep. but I feel like you had to be like rich as fuck to do that. You think? Yeah. That was like the last heyday of Airbnb. Yeah, Airbnb sucks now. Yeah, it's terrible. It's so expensive. And I'm all I see is tweets about people saying uh, that they have to do chores at their Airbnb. Yeah, <laughs> and there's like hidden cameras everywhere and shit. <laughs> yeah, that should be the right of the owner to be able to jerk off to whoever yeah. stays in their house. <laughs> yeah, I did a... Last time I did an Airbnb was like Shut right after I graduated up. high school. And I went to Martha's Vineyard with some friends and it was like over $1,000 for like two nights. Not sweet. No. And you have to have an awesome house or else you're just like staying in someone else's dead skin. Well, we were staying in someone's like guest house and they were home. That's even worse. Yeah. Because you really can't whoop it up. No. The reason you get an Airbnb is to go whoop it up. Yeah. And if you're not allowed to fucking whoop it up in an Airbnb, it's it's a waste of the fucking trip. No, yeah. I remember when uh, we were planning on, me and my friends, we were going to try and go to Europe after we graduated high school. And we had ended up, the plans ended up falling through, but, uh, the Airbnb, it was going to be like, it was like $60 a night for like four rooms Damn. in Europe. Where in Europe? I think that was in Barcelona. Barcelona? Yeah. Dude, it had to be. Yeah. I think, I feel like Barcelona has a crazy Airbnb economy or yeah. something like that. And I think locals are so pissed or like, or I don't know. I heard about this a while ago, but I would just live in an Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. I think, but I think that they're saying it's like ruining Barcelona, that it's like becoming this uh, Airbnb town instead of having any like local flavor. I don't know. Everything yeah. I've heard about Barcelona is it's the least Spanish city of all, of all Spain. I, 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 didn't, I, don't, I didn't really have any interest in going. Why? What? what uh, I want to go to Italy or yeah. Switzerland. Dude, I'm trying to go to Switzerland too. Bro. Yeah. Switzerland's sick. I want to go see the Alps. Let's take the pod to the Alps, dude. You'll yeah. teach me how to ski. I'll teach you how to yodel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to go to uh to go to Switzerland. What it, what intrigues you about it? Just the fucking the views. The Alps, bro. You're just trying to be in a fucking hot tub. Yeah, I want to take one of those long ass train rides. Yeah, in the mountains. A gondola, perhaps. No, no, not a gondola. Why? Train. What's wrong with a gondola? Gondolas suck. Why? Horrifying. What? Gondolas are fucking sick. No, they're scary. How? If it's closed in. I don't like heights. But like it's the that. same thing as a ski lift. Don't you take ski lifts when you go ski or do you take the thing where you hold on <laughs> and it drags you all the way to the top? Yeah, I do, but I don't enjoy them. Really? Yeah. It spooks you out? A little bit. I don't understand how... Uh, even watch it, watching Top Gun made me a lot less scared of heights flying and everything because it's like, dude, they're fucking just like tumbling through the air. There's like people who are going way harder on heights than just like riding a slow and steady gondola. It's basically a fucking escalator. Have you ever even heard of a gondola wire like snapping and fucking falling back to earth? No, I don't think the wire ever snaps. I think it's more the thing becomes. I don't I don't know. I, I guess I've only ever seen I've never seen I guess I've never heard of a gondola accident. I've heard of like chairlift accidents, but I think it's usually that's usually a, a manual problem. 
I'd be fucking shaking the gondola with you yeah. in it, dude. I'd be rocking that bitch back and forth, trying to tip it over. I think it's usually like a like a kid is like hanging off of it while the mom's like holding on to him. <laughs> it happens. It's happened before. I've seen so many videos of it, and they have to bring out like the net to catch the kid. Really? Yeah. That's fucking sick. The net doesn't do shit. It probably or do, do they fall through or do they like just bounce off the fucking? Net? I think they like you just like four people grab the corners of the net and they pull it as tight as they can. And the mom is getting her like mom strength, the no. fucking strength you get to save a child. Yeah, that's what I don't understand because there's one video specifically that I'm thinking of, and it's like the the mom is like holding on, or maybe this is actually happened. I think I might have witnessed this, this in person. Yeah, and the mom's like holding on to the kid. And she like isn't picking him back up. And I'm like, how do you not have like the like adrenaline rush to like just like find that strength? And she doesn't lift, love the kid. Yeah. Lift your child back onto the chairlift. It's probably adopted. dude. Yeah. She doesn't have the natural fucking strength to be able yeah. to, to yank the, the kid up. Yeah. I she, like, she, I, like if there was like my child was hanging off of a chairlift, I think I would find that strength and be like, all right. Let's pull him back up. Yeah, rip the fucking, yeah. Uh, rip the shoulder joint. Yeah. Like, rip the pec or whatever. I feel like, or uh, remember that video of the dude going hang gliding and, like, he realizes that he's not, like, strapped in, so he literally just has to, like, dangle on and both of his shoulders ripped, but if he had let go, he would have fallen to his death, so he just, like, tore the fuck out of both nah, of his shoulders just to save his life. It's a terrifying video, but, I mean, it's all right because they, obviously, they put it out. But, like, this mom has to just, like, fucking go yeah. all out sell out and save your fucking kid yeah find that strength i can't believe you witnessed that live yeah i think i did i don't remember i'm pretty sure it happened though when i when i was skiing when i was younger yeah there'll definitely be some fucking intrepid listener that's that'll be like here's the video you didn't fucking see this yeah, live. yeah well i mean they're obviously it's happened before so i'm sure there is videos of it happening but but then you're in the foreground of the video yeah that would be awesome bitch i was there <laughs> I'd love to dunk on someone. Find that strength. <laughs> Push yourself. Yeah. I just don't get it. How does that happen? The, the mom doesn't love their kid. Yeah. That's obviously what it, it is, dude. If you actually love your kid, yeah. from all the fucking accounts of parents, dude, who just tell you how fucking hard it is. Yeah. Dude, I was at a wedding this weekend and all the all like the new parents were being like, you don't even know what you're going to fucking get into. Yeah. One dude told me, he's like, you're so lazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where were you at? It was like in North uh, New York or like North uh, or like lower New York. I feel like you're never new going Jersey. to like cool places for weddings. <laughs> yeah. You're always just going to like. Random ass places, central in New York. ass Pennsylvania. Yeah, 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 dude. It was. Well, it was. A, it was a farm. It was sweet, but it was fucking. Uh, you don't have any friends out in like L.A. or anything? No, not Cali? really. Definitely not that are invited me to the fucking weddings, yeah. dude. I just sat in my fucking apartment the whole time I was in L.A., dude. I didn't do shit. Well, L.A. sucks. I didn't make any friends. Yeah, it fucking sucks out there. Yeah, probably no one's even getting married out there anymore. Anyway, the fucking no, no, no. The fucking thugs out there, man. It's all fucking thugs out in L.A. these days. They banned marriage. <laughs> Did in they? LA. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, because I heard, uh, what is it, like 92% of uh, LA marriages end in divorce or something yeah, like that? Probably. <laughs> Every single one of them. Yeah. It's just a ticking time bomb. You should be able to short someone's marriage. You should be able to buy stocks against their fucking marriage. Yeah, bet on it. Yeah, that shit you is should not... open that up on the sports book. <laughs> <laughs> Short David Silvana, yeah. how many months? Yeah, over, under. <laughs> Overs club thongs that we're, we're getting yeah. out. <laughs> That would rule. That would be fucking sick, dude. We got to be able to bet on fucking on, on more shit. They're trying to do uh, more like reality shows in uh, at at Barstool or like more like game show type of things like the way that they did uh, the most dangerous game show and uh, Barstool, Barstool versus, versus America, America and comes shit out like that. Next week, right? I think it starts coming out. There's just a trailer that's probably going to be dope as fuck. Yeah, it looks good. And uh, I was in the meeting for it. And dude, I kept on pitching these shows that like I want to show that's like it's just like the people in the office that like date each other like yeah. i feel like that would be an interesting ass show yeah just uh seeing behind their their lens or a show where it's like everybody goes away to like the jersey shore or something like that like a friend group like whoever like whoever's like a tight group of friends they go away like uh the way that jersey shore did it or like the way that like summer house that show on bravo does it where they're just it's a fuck fest dude yeah, yeah. they should have some show like that and they're just like dude we can't do that it's gonna yeah be i mean I, it makes sense <laughs> like yeah. we absolutely just can't have the employees that would be like a nightmare to work with those people after what do you mean that would suck how 
I don't know, dude. I, I, I was like, I felt like it was weird. I feel like doing a reality show only works it like, or obviously the things that we're doing are working, but I think it's like, it's a lot easier as a contestant. If you're with people, you don't know. Oh, to do a show like that where everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Like you're never, Oh, I'm never going to see you again after this. Yeah. So I don't mind fucking you over <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. It was like hostile, or I guess I can't even talk about that show, but yeah, but that was enough. But like shows like that get like hostile and then it's like, well, I have to go back to work with this person. But it would be like the juiciest possible content. Like if you're trying to just yeah. make fucking content, like uh, I guess it is people's lives at stake. Yeah. But uh, if you just wanted to make the juiciest content, it's like the stuff that people care about the most. Yeah. And it'd be great for like women followers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, like a lot of the shows on Bravo have like similar, like a, a similar through line of that, yeah. or it's just like a bunch of relationships with, with one another. But I like, think it would, uh, I think it would work if people could understand that we're filming a reality show and being like, Hey, this is all for content. Like when this ends, no one gives a fuck. But I think almost everyone in the office, like for some reason, can't comprehend that. Yeah, because once you get in the, once you get under the lights, it, like you just like start They're like this is real fucking life. <laughs> you start just acting like a fucking yeah. yeah your animal instincts take over. Which you did to me on Barstool vs America, I will never forget. <laughs> you bastard. Yeah. I heard Joey and Pat are just an on camera fucking friendship now. After what happened, really? No, <laughs> I don't know. Joey I, and Pat did something this weekend. Oh, the 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 video that they did with Big T, where they're like, they're like, if you're gay, you, you tell us now. You won't. The punishment won't be nearly as bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as fuck. Yeah. Have we ever had them on here? No. We should have them on yeah. here eventually. Yeah, they're very funny. With their funny asses, dude. It's just so funny, like uh, how uh, Joey has like unlocked Pat. He was like a hidden oh, character. Oh, yeah, 100%. And now, like, Pat used to be, like, fucking, like, talking about the Celtics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And now he's talking about, like, <laughs> squeezing a uh, condom out into his mouth like a go <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he just has a whole new fucking outlook on life. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, they're definitely a good combo. They went on PMT, and I heard it was very funny. It's just impressive that Pat was able to just be like, all right, like, yeah, are we just talking about dude shit? Like, I'll fucking talk <laughs> yeah, about dude yeah. shit too. And then he I mean, just, I get this. it. He's probably didn't want to be the one gay dude in the office talk, or I guess there's more than one gay person, but he didn't want to be like the gay content dude, like doing what they're doing now by himself. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> People were looking at him way, way what? differently. <laughs> What? Wow, what it's true. Yeah. It's probably easier when he has someone with him to make jokes and stuff. Yeah, you can't be gay alone. That's jerking off. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need someone else to fucking be gay with, dude. Yeah. You can't even tell. People would were like, dude, I don't even think Pat's gay because like and they didn't <laughs> see him like acting on it. Well, it's like there, that was a theory like, for a long like ass a, time. A lot of topics, like I don't know, like like uh, like I know, call her daddy now is like a solo podcast. But there's no way she would have done that podcast and started it by herself and just been like, "Yeah, I was sucking fucking this MLB player's asshole from <laughs> upside down." Like, and you wouldn't, you like ladies, she wouldn't have just the way yeah. to suck an MLB. She wouldn't have just started that like in her apartment by herself. She need you need someone to build it yeah. off of or kind of like find your voice or like yeah. find your uh, find your footing. And, and she uh, still doesn't. She doesn't even do it anymore. She doesn't even do shit like that anymore. What do you mean? She's like a interview now. Interview. She podcast. no longer sucks and fucks. No. <laughs> She's celibate now. <laughs> really? Yeah, she's on like she's in like a recovery program. Oh no, dude. She got the 12 steps. She's, yeah. She's in there with Tiger Woods at the yeah. sex addiction clinic yeah. sitting in a circle. Yeah. It's been 90 days I since I last she's luck a luck. virgin. <laughs> that was a theory in here too, that it was like uh when you talk so much about something that like it can't possibly be how you're actually living that way. No. Like when you push the envelope so much. Yeah. Coop's a verge, bro. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Bad news, Coop. You're you've been exposed as a verge. As a verge, big time verge. And I heard she's a like a dedicated member of the Catholic Church as well. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I yeah. knew people that were in her parish in, yeah. uh, in Northeast Philly. Yeah, she was. Fucking, Alex Cooper's not even her real name. She would get to church early as fuck. She, yeah, she was like a long ass Irish Catholic name. Marjorie Margaret Mary. McClanahan. Yeah. <laughs> Four M's, dude. She was fucking in there fucking praying. That's the only time she was on her knees. <laughs> <She's praying. laughs> this bitch has been frauding the entire time. She just has a great relationship with God. Yeah. <laughs> Call him our father <laughs> who art in heaven, dude. He is the fucking, he is the goat with a capital H. Fuck yeah. <laughs> She'll fucking rebrand as that shit. 
No, she won't. Yes, she will, dude. She'll I mean, be Catholic before think... she knows it. If Stern, <laughs> if Stern fucking gave all all his shit up, there, you have not, you have no choice but to go to the other side. What does yeah. he talk about now? I think uh, like chastity and wokeness. He's like Taylor Lorenz. I was listening. to He's like, Stern. no one should joke about COVID. It's really serious. Yeah, I was listening to Stern. Um, Nick was telling me to listen to this. I listened to like the nine eleven broadcast that he did. Like went like actively during nine eleven. It was hilarious. No, it was it was fucking crazy. But they would try. Let's and, get like, Beetlejuice. In. Yeah, they would try and like sprinkle jokes in here and there. Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, that. And then all of a sudden they're like, "We're under attack," and he's like, "I want to peel the faces off of everyone in the Middle East." <laughs> really? Like, shit that oh like God. that. <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, they like went from being like joking around to being like, "We need to bomb multiple countries and kill everyone there." Dude, war will make people racist real fast. Yeah, very fast. Like, he kept on being like, "This is what happens when you have spoiled children and the parents don't take care of them." <laughs> What? As the in, fuck? like, they are our children and we're not punishing them. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't think that's what was going on I went out, I went down a deep 9-11 rabbit hole this week. Was it dope? I mean, and it's just crazy how fucked up, like, the whole Iraq war and everything was and, like, the torture and everything. Yeah, like the just US Saudi Arabian sucked. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were just fucking people over for no... Like, they killed so many more people, innocent civilians, than, than, than were killed in 9-11. That's fucking based as fuck, bro. I mean, it's, yeah, it was fucking crazy. But, uh, yeah, it is funny that, like, like, like so many more. That we went Brutally. To, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Torturing the fuck out of them. It wasn't Iraq and it wasn't Afghanistan. No, no. But it was like, oh, they're Middle Eastern dudes. Like, they got, they have powerful leaders. Well, like, I know. I think it Saddam was. Saddam and let's go Bin Laden. Yeah, dude. And I, I read, I read something that 70% of America at the time thought that Saddam Hussein was, like, in charge of 9-11. It's crazy. It had nothing to do with 9-11. They were just like, we're going to go kill Saddam. <laughs> They just wanted to kill some, or they wanted the oil. And now they're like, now, like since it's coming out or or that it came out that it was all like Saudi dudes. Now people are like, we can't do the, we can't have this like live golf tour or whatever. Oh yeah. Because like the Saudi dudes did 9-11 or whatever. Like they're going to fucking, they're going to fuck up the golf money now because yeah. we'll probably start some new war. We yeah. never want to beef with the fucking Saudis. Now they just want beef over golf. We didn't want beef because they got the fucking sweet, sweet oil, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll be able to do whatever they fucking want, dude. Bomb us to hell, dude. We, yeah. we want the fucking sweet ass oil that they have. Yeah. And that's all I know about foreign policy. <laughs> no, I, I watched some good movies. I watched uh, Vice. Have you ever seen Vice with Christian Bale? It's the one where he plays Dick Cheney. Oh yeah, that was dope. Yeah, I also didn't know it was dope that Cheney's daughter Cheney. was gay as fuck. Yeah, I didn't know that Cheney was like the basically the president. What do you mean? Oh, was, like he was like the most powerful vice president of all time. Yeah, I think that well, he wasn't he in the game here. He was just in politics for so long. Yeah, but like George Bush was basically like not a great like he didn't. Really, I think he just wanted to like impress his father and become president and just he just wanted to paint. He yeah. just wanted to kick back and paint. Yeah, so then he had Cheney as his vice president and then Cheney was essentially the pre like he basically like made most of the calls. Yeah. Like he was like running shit at the White House. Well, he was killing the fuck out of people probably, right? Oh, like he like I think he they there there's a scene when 9/11's happening and they're like in like this like this like bunker and there's like all these like rep like all these people around and Cheney's like like in charge cuz the president's not there and He's like actively talking to his lawyer being like, cause he's like about to do some fuck shit. <laughs> like, no, like actually that's like what happened. It's crazy. What and they're like, why the lawyer? fuck is he talking to his lawyer right now? He's like, I can definitely do this fuck shit, right? Yeah. He like <laughs> said that any plane that comes over, shoot them down. I don't know. It was a bunch of shit. And then they were like, he like, I mean, he was like, basically, I want to invade Iraq. I want to kill Saddam Hussein, all that shit. This is my fucking chance. Yeah. Uh, but then they like gay washed his image by having him. They're like, he's a good guy because his daughter's gay and he didn't hate yeah. her. Yeah. But then they had his other daughter like turn against the gay one and be because like the, the his daughter was like running for like uh, the Wyoming whatever representative something. Gay representative or something. No, shit. no, not the gay one. Oh, oh, got it, got it. And then they someone sent out a uh, like their his her competitor sent out like a phone call being like to like every house in Wyoming being like did you know that uh the Cheneys have a gay daughter and like they were all super anti-gay marriage in Wyoming damn so then she went against gay marriage and then like her sister and then like they don't talk anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah her sister's probably like what the fuck yeah, she was like yeah it's like a whole thing but apparently Cheney told her to say she's against gay marriage 
Oh, so he's just a he. He truly is a dick. <laughs> I think, dude. It was a little he just weird. Lives up to the name. In the beginning, it seems like he's a good guy. Dude, I was cranking out some fucking uh, some show on uh, Showtime that Dick Cheney uh, showed up in. It's about like the first ladies. It's about all the first ladies. Uh, it's about like Michelle Obama and fucking Betty Ford and Eleanor Roosevelt. And they're just like rewriting history in the show to make it seem like the women made every single decision. Oh, yeah. And they're like making like Barack Obama seem like a bitch being like, yeah. Michelle, like, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. You just don't want me in politics. <laughs> You're just jealous. <laughs> and it's like my yeah. Ola Davis just like fucking girl bossing the fuck out of him. Yeah. Just serving looks and make Fra Franklin Delano Roosevelt look like such a bitch. Like yeah. he like wheels in and overhears his mom being like, he'll never be president because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. He could never do that. Yeah. And he's like on the verge of tears. You can't rewrite history like that. Like no. people want to make like women uh, like major characters in TV shows and absolutely rightfully so. But you can't like like just they weren't part of like a lot of parts of history because like they weren't allowed to be. Yeah. And like you have to either be historically accurate to like that. There was just a ton of dudes or like make a different story like you, yeah, you don't have yeah. to like have like mary todd lincoln being the one that fucking ends slavery or whatever yeah, like it's yeah, just yeah. just not how it went down no, yeah it makes sense fucking makes sense bro well yeah i mean it's true you can't just rewrite shit to change what the rea reality was or maybe i don't know quentin tarantino i guess kind of does that yeah but that's way different maybe these people are just trying to be if tarantino. it was like michelle obama was going around like murdering <laughs> Like, that's a different story. <laughs> Laura Bush was the one who killed Bin Laden. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Bush came in with a fucking yeah, yeah, sniper yeah, yeah, around yeah, the corner, yeah. put two in Bin Laden's skull. Yeah. Doof, doof. Yeah. And I watched, uh, what else did I watch? I watched The Report. That one was really good. Super interesting. It was with Adam Driver. And it's basically like he's in charge of, uh, he's in charge of investigating why all of the tapes during the uh, like CIA enhanced interrogation method practicing was were destroyed damn and it was basically because they were just like torturing the fuck out of dudes were they, they some sweet waterboarded some dude like over 180 times really and gotten and got nothing out of him <laughs> not one thing everything he told them they either already knew or it was a lie so that they would stop torturing him and well, they were just like this works like we, we need to keep doing this and they were like it's not working or the dude just had nothing like, yeah, no, that, were, that like, was the thing. No, that dudes, was like, the thing. It was like they don't have anything. The dude is just like an honest, like yeah. working man. He just like busts his ass, like yeah. owns like an electronic store there, just yeah. waterboarding the fuck out of him. Yeah. And basically it was like two dudes who were like in charge who like brought the whole like like they gave him like all like the new interrogation methods and they were like out because they were like, I want to step up after 9-11 and like get in like win this war, like shit like that, like die hard Americans. And uh and then they end up like Obama, like Obama becomes president. He puts a stop to that. And then one of the dudes is like on the, in the group of people that's in charge of like the drone strike program with Obama, which then ended up killing a fuck ton of other people for no reason. <laughs> so it's like, maybe just get this guy out of the fucking white house. Dude, we're just kill. We're, we're going to be killing people, yeah, dude. We're going to kill people no matter what. There's no president. Like you think there's ever been a president who's just hasn't like killed a ton of dudes. No, no, no. And there probably never will be. Yeah, you just have to be, or there, there's just always like conflicts. People, we just have like soldiers in like Sudan right now, or there's yeah. like conflicts in like Myanmar where yeah. it's like, you're not supposed to go there or whatever. You're, you just can't go to some of these random ass countries. Yeah. We're just fucking killing people. There's just unrest, dude. There's just civil wars going on. Yeah. The, not about the, to get peace. The funniest scenes in, in, in the Vice movie though is when Dick Cheney's having a heart attack. It happens like 10 times and he's like, I believe I have to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like that's it he gets off stage and he's like sweating and he's like i believe i should go to the hospital <laughs> <laughs> from everything i hear it seems like a lot of heart attacks are like you can just muscle through them oh uh probably not but he seemed to he almost he died yeah, he was having a heart attack. No, like he all, like he was like, they were like, basically he was going to die. And then some dude. Is that why his face was like always like this? No, I think that's just what he looked like. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have like a stroke or some shit? No. He didn't have like a dead arm? No, I don't think so. Damn. He just had a fucking whack ass face. Yeah. Dude, the fact that that's, Bill, that, that's Christian 
Bale in that movie is fucking insane. I know he's the fucking goat method actor. I mean, dude, he gained like seventy five pounds. I didn't. I did not know it was. Christian I heard he Bale. got older for the role. Probably, <laughs> dude. I don't think he's doing that anymore, right? Not getting older anymore. No, <laughs> no, he's not. He's not getting gaining the weight and losing the weight. Why? It's too stressful on his body. They said that like he will die if he does it again. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he got hilarious. down to 120 pounds for the uh machinist yeah which is fucked and then he did batman i think like six months later and was it was just massively <laughs> jacked yeah but i feel like that's a dude who could just pound hgh yeah probably no there's no like r- negative repercussion for him to be able to just fucking get a ton of hgh in his body i mean hgh is bad is it? I well, that's probably HGH why he's going to die right. if he slims down. I think it's one of the bad steroids. The machine is too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck. I think HGH is the one where your heart explodes, right? Does it? Or is, you just is, have a light-ass heart attack? Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Is that the one where it just everything grows? I think. And yeah. then your heart gets super big? It's, yeah, it's just a human growth <laughs> hormone is what it stands for. But I'm not going to pretend to know shit about it. I might be thinking. I might be wrong. So don't, don't quote me on that. I'm going to fucking quote you, dude. I'm about to tell my doctor. I'm about to go get a checkup. When was the last time you got a checkup? A couple months ago. Yeah? Yeah. Everything simpatico, brother? <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you about uh, what happened with my doctor at the airport? Did we talk about this? Came down with a small dick? No, no, no. I So I was calling. I had a flight to go to my sister's graduation. Oh, he didn't come down with a small dick? No. Oh, okay. I got you. I had a flight and uh, I called my doctor on Friday and I was like, hey, can I refill my Ativan prescription? And they were like, yeah, sure. Sassy's trying to get fucked up. Yeah. And so they fill it. And they fill it on a Friday to the pharmacy, like right below here. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll How many get did you get? Just three. Yeah. A lot. Not a lot. And. Uh, Sounds like a pregame, brother. I know. I know. <laughs> I was pissed about that, but that's a whole other story. And because uh, usually I get six and they, they draw me down to three, which I was like, what the fuck? But um. So I was like, all right, I'll go pick it up. My flight wasn't until late on Saturday. So I was like, I'll just go pick it up in the morning tomorrow. Uh-huh. Pharmacy's closed on Saturday, which I didn't know. Damn. So then I called my doctor, who isn't open on Saturday either. So they like transfer me to like a third party doctor. The doctor on call? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, uh, is there any way I could uh, transfer my prescription to a pharmacy that's open today? And they're like, um... I'll have to talk to someone about that, uh, but I just want to let you know like the callback time right now is like f- a couple hours. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I was like, okay, I just won't take my out of hand then. I'll just go without it, which I ended up doing. So I go to the airport and I'm sitting at the, uh, I'm sitting at like the bar and I was eating, I was eating lunch. Probably getting shit faced too. And I was having counter- some beers. Yeah, not yeah. Ha- you don't have the out of hand, so. Yeah. And, uh, what are you going to fly over? <laughs> no, 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 God, no, no, no. It actually ended up not, it ended up getting worse because then I had like two beers and I had a little buzz going and then the flight got delayed like three hours. And then I was like hung over on the plane before we even took off. <laughs> yeah. You either have to go all the yeah, way. Yeah. Um, so I get a call back while I'm at the bar and I was like, oh fuck. I was like, I, I was like, I'm just going to tell him like, I, I can't get it because I'm already at the airport. So I pick up. And like the lady, it's this like lady who's not my doctor, don't know her, answers the phone. And she's like, she's like, hey, so like, w- like, what are you doing so much that you need Ativan once a month? What? And I was like, what? Was it that Ativan police? Thing? I don't know, dude. Like, and, and then she's like, she's like, I was like, oh, well, I travel a lot for work, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, so you need Ativan once a month for that? You're traveling that much? And I'm like, Yeah. And then she's like, okay, look, I can't just write you a prescription for Ativan. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, I already have a prescription written, bitch. And second of all, I'm not like, I'm not sitting, I'm not like on my hands and knees begging you to give me Ativan. You're not like scratching at her door. Yeah, being yeah. Like, hey, like. And then, and then she's like, she's like, where, she's like, wh- like, why, she's like, why don't you just ask your doctor to give you more Ativan? And I was like, I don't know. We haven't really had that conversation. And then I was like, I'm not even, I was like, I'm not even in my hometown. I'm in New York right now. Shouldn't have said this. And then she's like, I'm not writing you a prescription in New York. What? I was like, okay. And then the I was like, city that never sleeps. Yeah. And then I was no like, no way. Yeah. I was like, okay, got it. I don't even need the Ativan. I'm already at the airport. And then she just goes, sure. And then she hangs up. 
What? I w- dude, I was like fume. I was like so fired up. Who was she? I was like, I'm about to like find this person's address and fucking murder them. Who was she? I have no idea. No idea. How could she just police your fucking drug use? Like I don't know. That? I was like, look, the, the prescription's already filled. I was like, that's not the problem. The problem is I can't pick it up. She was acting like I was like clawing at the pharmacy door, trying to get my my three Ativans. Calling everybody you know, trying to like get them to wire you yeah. money so you can fucking yeah. pick up some more Ativan. It was a pretty basic thing. I was like, I need Ativan or I, I, my Ativan prescription is filled. I can't get it because the pharmacy's closed. Can you send it somewhere else? And listen, lady, dude, if you don't give me drugs, dude, I, it's, it's way easier to just get drugs on the street. Dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, way yeah. easier. It's yeah. way faster. Dude, it's, it's so crazy that people think that uh, or just that over the phone, they're going to determine who can or can't have drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's like, what if I was addicted? Like, what is that? And what was that conversation going to do? Yeah. The prescriptions filled. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm going to be able to access yeah. this at some point. And I haven't even taken Ativan in like three months or something like that. I, I didn't even pick it up. It's still at the pharmacy. Is Ativan, I, I mean, do people it's a have- a controlled substance. People have that like crazy dependency issues with Ativan? I don't know I mean, anybody that's benzo, fucked it's up a off, benzos. off Ativan. It's like the, it's like I a, think you would graduate to a Xanax. Yeah, it's like a lesser version of Xanax. Before you got addicted. So they're trying to- like, But it is addictive. They're gatekeeping Xanax. This Pretty gatekeeping much. shit is bullshit, dude. People yeah. have gone too far gatekeeping the good drugs. I think, uh, actually, I think what makes it so addictive is that it's like people with like intense anxiety, like who are like constantly anxious, take it. And then they're like, wow, I feel normal for the first time. And then they just like keep taking it. They want to feel normal? Yeah. That's fucked up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Greedy pigs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really are, dude. I mean, I get it. Like Wanting I'll, to feel normal at all times. <laughs> yeah. I like, I love taking it when I'm flying because I'm like, wow. I have no worries in my head right now. Yeah, it's dope. Or it's just, uh, and I'm dude. I'm a I'm a rough flyer when I don't take it. I can t- I, I so I've taken it like I or I have flown for the first time in like two years without taking it. Like the last like four flights I had. Like when we went to where the fuck we went? Where were we going for neighborhood eats? Oh, Texas. I didn't take oh, it yeah, then. Yeah. That was a long flight. That was like a four hour flight. And uh-huh. I didn't. That was the first time I didn't take it in. And you were chilling years, and I was totally fine. Yeah, but uh. It's still, dude, it's it's not the mid-flight, it's just the takeoff, dude. Because you're afraid that all the turbulence is going to send you rocketing back to Earth? Dude, I don't know. I just have these dreams. It's fucked. I'm, I'm fucked up in the head, you're dude. You're fucked, dude. What? I have these dreams. You're fucking twisted, bro. What? I have these dreams where I'm where I'm flying and I'm taking off. It's usually I'm not even in the plane. I'm, I'm watching from the runway and the plane starts taking off and then the engines just stop and it just starts going back <sighs> down and then it just explodes on the Damn. runway. But you watch from the runway. So you're- Yeah. You're but there's been a lot where, there's been a lot where I'm in the plane as well. Interesting. Which is more fun. Uh, honestly, for some reason, the ones <laughs> where I'm watching from the runway are way scarier. Because usually it's like someone that I'm like, that like, like uh, one of my family members or something is on the plane and I'm like watching it take You're off. You're seeing them off? Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, you know that that's just an allegory for something else that's going on in your life. Yeah. Your dream isn't about your dream. You're not dreaming about airplanes. No, airplanes I think are just I explaining about you, you like your fear. This is your comedy career going yeah, up right now. Yeah. That and actually, there is some is like, sh- yeah, there is some like science behind You it. have to be careful talking about your dreams because people will DM you uh, and like yeah. explain them to you. Yeah. <laughs> I've already Googled it. I don't like it. I, I know it's just because I'm afraid of flying. No, dude. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, then why is it your family on the plane, not you? I think you got I've molested. On, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure you, you got. Touched it's always your uncle boy. Tom, right? <laughs> yeah, your uncle Tom went yeah. between the ages of five and seven. Not a lot of memories, right? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Connected dots, brother. Yeah. There's yeah. Just, people people get there. way too into that shit because it's true. It's what the. Uh, there was there was a period of time too where a lot of them were like I was in the plane and the plane crashes into shark infested waters. Oh, those no. ones were rough. I think kind I of a double cut whammy. myself shaving today, dude. Fuck, dude. Are you serious? Are we doing an ad? Yeah, let's do an ad. Game time. Game time. A ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on ticket sports concerts and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. Let's go to a baseball game. Mm. Yeah, we should. Let's I'd go to a to. baseball game and let's use game time. Yeah. The biggest I used last game time minute. twice this weekend. For real? For Lumineers? Yeah. I went to you a went concert to Friday, ran it back Saturday. Same, Used game time both times. Same concert? Mm-hmm. No way. Mm-hmm. My boy Spud was there. Did, did you oh, see Spud? Fuck. Spud was there. I probably Should have ran did, link dude. game with Spud. 
The last minute, the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you never could buy. Download mm. the Game Time app, go to the account tab, create a login, redeem code BOYDAD for $20 off your first purchase. $20 off is like seven tickets to a baseball game. Yeah, baseball yeah. is cheap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. <laughs> that is code BOYDAD for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Yeah, uh, baseball is the fucking dopest game to uh, go see live as far as the difference between seeing it live and seeing it on TV. On TV. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Baseball is considerably more enjoyable. Or it's just a vibe, dude. Go out and catch a vibe. The vibes are, I mean, hockey might be uh, a bigger step up. It's way more exciting to see hockey live. But the vibes at a baseball game are fucking beautiful, dude. They're Yeah, immaculate. it's just like a, a setting for your day. It's a very summary yeah. thing to do. It's just you eat hot dogs. You oh, drink. yeah, it's a fun time. Non-alcoholic beers. Mm. You fucking have a liquid death or some shit like that. A fucking canned water that simulates the drinking experience. Seventeen dollars canned water, and you feel like you're drinking. Yeah, you wind up having a fucking gang of them. (laughs) Um, (laughs) you're hydrated as fuck. Oh yeah, the the Celsius, dude. I'm about to. Actually, I'm not going to. But I want to. I want to. What are you having? A mezcal summer? I'm trying to, or I'm a, I'm a G&T guy in the summertime. Ooh. Gin and tonic, bro. One of five drinks that makes your breath smell better. Really? Yeah, dude. Are you off the beers? Uh, no, but at this wedding, I was I was heavy off the gins and tonics. Oh, really? Whenever the summertime comes around, you, I just want to get, I just want to have some gin and tonic. You like gin? Yeah. No, I hate it. It's like a disgusting grandpa yeah, drink. I hate Except it. for in the summertime. No, I hate when it. you're drinking outside at like I do a fucking here. It keeps wedding. You slim though. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Stops you from being such a fat fuck. Yeah, I'm cutting back big time. You plan to cut back big time? No, I am. I didn't drink. I, I went up yesterday at the stand, dead sober. No. Not a single drink. This was throwing club sodas back like never before, though, because I didn't realize, like, I just have to have a drink in my hand the entire time. Yeah, like you still thing. have to drink yeah. the same amount of liquid <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Yeah. Your body I needs was it. throwing back. I had probably had, like, 10 club sodas in, like, 30 minutes. Yeah. It sounds kind of dope, dude. It sounds just like you're hydrating and you're not being hung over. It sounds like the benef- there's like a ton of benefits yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I felt way better. Uh, I, yeah. I just like, I got to stop drinking so much because it's getting out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Or I just feel like I drank, I've drank for like the last 21 days straight. I feel like. Yeah. And I feel like that every 21 days. Yeah. That's basically what happened to me last week. I drank every single night. Yes. Not by, I'm not like drinking by myself, but it's like, uh, like it always is like, oh, let's go grab a beer after work. And then it's like, next thing you know, it's like seven in the morning. Yeah. It's hard for you guys. I don't know how you do it. Cause like, fucking we don't really have up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really have weekdays. I feel like it's sort of all the same. Yeah. I know. So it's hard to, I don't have like, yeah, I, I'm like, still doing the same things I do on the weekends that I do on the weekdays. Yeah, the fact that I, I often catch myself being like, oh, it's the weekend, I have to turn up. Like, no, that's really like, the weekend is a, reserved for people who have actual jobs. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, work yeah. hard. And, and they like, like earned yeah. it. Yeah, they earned yeah. it. I've earned nothing, dude. No, I, yeah, I came in true. late, I just fucking did, did absolutely nothing throughout yeah. the day. My, my fucking tasks are easy as fuck. Like, there's people toiling, dude. Yeah. There's people who have to wear uncomfortable clothes all fucking yeah, day. Yeah. Their necks like fucking tight with shit all day they have to talk to people that they don't want to talk to at all just fucking having forced bad conversations logging paperwork that's probably what your pharmacist was doing like they're like oh dude i'm not about to fucking yeah, log paperwork yeah, for yeah. this dickhead to switch pharmacies <laughs> yeah. it's a saturday i don't care i'm gonna pass him along to the meanest bitch that i could possibly find because fuck him for even trying to make me work on yeah. a saturday People are working out here, dude, and I am not one of them. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We, we really don't deserve the weekend. My hands are soft. Yeah. <laughs> Been counting money. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have, dude, getting up on the sta- at the stand. Yeah. Who was, who'd you see that was funny over there? You see anybody funny? No, last night I went up for like... <laughs> 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 Easy chance to like shout anybody out or like be nice. No, to I didn't watch any of this, any of the shows. Last no, actually, night. no one funny over there. I, I, I was on a. I actually was. <laughs> I had a show in Brooklyn on Saturday, which was very fun. Oh yeah, how did yeah. that shit go? It was very fun. Uh, it was awesome. Francis was there. He opened, and so did uh, Colum Tyrell, friend of the pod. Dude, I'm going on his show later on this week. I think I am as well. Oh, hell yeah, I'm going with you. No. Yep. I'm not going anymore, bro. Call him, text him like a hundred times. Be like, yo, are you coming on Wednesday? Dude, we're all looking for a little bit more solo <laughs> Rowan content. Yeah. I, dude, I don't have to go if you want to go by yourself. I've already done it. 
Me and Owen are gonna go. I've already, I've already <laughs> fucking uh, walked that road. I know, dude. That's fucking bullshit, bro. He, he kept on. Be- I think he like felt bad that he didn't invite me, and he just kept on asking, be like, "Yo, are you coming? You coming on Wednesday? You coming on Wednesday?" With his fucking Irish ass yeah, accent. Yeah. Dude. Harry, Harry, right, come on. <laughs> Harry, you're coming on Wednesday, you little fuck. <laughs> uh, and- How was the show though? It was great. It was, it was fun. Did it was you, have awesome. to, you have to pivot your content at all while you're in Brooklyn? No, I actually, it, it was very fun. It felt very, I, I did like a very tight 30. I feel like. How'd they respond to your homophobia? There, there was none. <laughs> so you did have to change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No jokes like that. So you changed it a lot. Yeah. I mean, I made one joke about my dad being gay, but that was basically it. And he's just gay and for it you. And it killed. It killed. Yeah. What was it? Oh yeah. Murdered. Hell yeah, dude. It was fun. It was a fun show. The crowd got a little rowdy in the beginning again, and I shut. I was like, I'm not doing this shit again. So How did they like, like, get no. rowdy? And what do you mean again? Oh, in DC, it was I didn't. I barely did jokes because the crowd was just yelling at me the entire time. Oh, that's why you were calling me. Yeah, they tried to do that, and I was like, I'm not calling anybody. <laughs> just <laughs> let me no do fucking my fucking dog jokes. and pony show. Yeah. You explain to them it's a fine art. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, this I'm, is my art. <laughs> I'm working to get a set. And then it's like, I get there and they're like, take your shirt off. That's like, what, that's what uh, got Michael Richards over the end. Yeah. They were like, sense. call yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it makes sense, dude. Get where he's coming from now. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the verge. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. <laughs> You held it back though. That's uh, that's dope, dude. I, I'm happy you had a good time in Brooklyn. Yeah, dude. Francis's video where he uh, so stopped funny. on the side of the road was fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it was really funny when he when he pans the camera over to uh, so that just the the no one in front of him. I fucking died laughing. Yeah, he's a psychopath. We need to get his psychopath ass in here. I know. I has anybody to else him. had him in uh, for no. a podcast? No. Yeah, everybody's pussies, too. and they are not realizing that no one is in charge, dude. The no, inmates are running none. the asylum. So if we get a guy who got out of jail it, yeah. to fucking come back in jail, dude, nobody's going to be mad. Yeah. Um, dude, I, I was talking about that video, and I was like, so did you just like like do the video and then just like dip? And he was like, no, I stayed there for like over an hour. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, I was terrified because like the car behind him was like slamming on the horn and flashing the lights and shit. But if it was an actually emergency, the the dude would have got out and been like, my my fucking like yeah. kids died in there. Yeah, the yeah. fuck out of the Apparently, way. Apparently it wasn't even like a, like there was like an exit right above too. So it was like, people were like it causing problems. That would have been a, uh, a very Francis thing to do to like try and do that. And then like an old lady dies behind him because oh, yeah. he was like trying to take a stand. <laughs> be perfectly on brand for him. A fucking nanogenarian ch- <laughs> croaks in the fucking car. Yeah. <laughs> They're just trying to get him to a hospital. He just sets up in front of an ambulance. <laughs> not, 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 not. <laughs> he said he was like making eye contact with all the people next to him and they were like, good job. <laughs> I had once, I was going to the Cape on like Memorial Day weekend, I think. And we were just getting passed by all those people and us and the car in front of us. It was a trucker. We all just started throwing all the shit in our car at the tr- yeah. passing cars. Really? Dude, yeah, it, we had like 40 McNuggets, yeah. just napkins, straws. You like can't do that in cetera. Massachusetts. And they always try and do it. And it's like, it's like, it becomes like such a hazard. Like, I don't think you're supposed to do it anywhere. No, they, in, 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 there's some streets in Boston where that third lane opens up for traffic, like when it's like super busy. But mm-hmm. it's like a fucking nightmare because like, like you don't, the, sh- the actual shoulder or like is it a usable third lane? I feel like, a, like the, the shoulder lane. is a whole. I don't know what the fucking. I've never heard the term breakdown lane. Is it the shoulder or is it? I don't know. A whole I've other heard lane. The term breakdown lane. Huh? Same. It's the same thing. I never heard the. There's breakdown some lane. streets I'm pretty sure in Massachusetts where it opens I don't up think like during cars certain just hours. Break down anymore. Yeah, I don't that think we need happen. a breakdown lane. Well, anyway, I, I remember like the first time I saw that happen, and I remember like about to be like merging off the highway. And all of a sudden, just cars are just like just whizzing by you. And you're like, I didn't even know there was a call. Like, it's like, I'm surprised more people don't fucking die. When I that think happens. people do die yeah. a lot, dude. I think that quarterback, a fucking Jim Beheim, that yeah. the coach killed somebody, dude. I think it does happen. Yeah. And like, then you don't he got a standing O two yeah. nights later. Yeah. Because of what he had to go through. <laughs> yeah. Dude, murdering is a trying ordeal, dude. It was probably it stressful as fuck for him to, to murder in cold blood like that. Dude, that's another- Baldwin had to fuck his way through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude, another thing from that, uh, the Dick Cheney thing. He like shot some dude. Yeah, hunting. Uh- hunting. And he said he thought it was a deer and they were in like an open field hunting birds. <laughs> he just shot a dude in the, in the face, face. Yeah, in the with face. a shotgun. And then he didn't oh. apologize ever. And that dude apologized to him. 
my face was there, Dick. Sorry yeah, about he that, apologized. Wait, he got everything. a shotgun to the face and lived and to lived. tell the tale. Yeah. I think it's like bird shot, so it's yeah, like okay. light buck yeah, shot. It's yeah. like uh, not. It's oh, not it's just heavy. supposed to take the. Bird I don't down. know what it was like in real life, but obviously like, the movie is supposed to be like kind of funny too. But like they're literally just like shooting birds, and then he just like turns and just shoots the guy right in the head. <laughs> And they're like, come on, dick. <laughs> the fact that you could just withstand that. Yeah. But yeah, dude, he's like, I thought it was a deer. It is savage to survive a shotgun to the face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't apologize to anybody, but like, like that is fucking sweet. You would look like fucking. I, I mean, didn't even know you could run for president if you had like charges too. He had like two DUIs. Oh, yeah, dude. Everybody has DUIs. Not Chill, me. bro. Well, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> And I plan to run for president, bro. Yeah. I got a couple more in me before I go for office, dude. I'm going to start at school board, and I'm going to work my way up, dude. Fuck yeah. I'm going to fix the schools, and then I'm going to get up to the infrastructure. I'm going to fix the roads, and then I'm going to curry fucking public favor, start a big-ass nonprofit, go into venture capital, make enough money where I can go back to my political roots, fucking run for mayor, run for governor, and then run for press, dude. I'm thinking four DUIs in by that point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After four years at the new Important to have a steady schedule. <laughs> yeah. Or if you don't have goals, no, yeah, then you never know what you're going to live, what you're going to fall short of. Yeah. So now we're doing DUIs. <laughs> yeah. First one to get a DUI wins. Yeah. When was the rebrand? Remember it was DWI for a bit? There's yeah. still a lot. Like there's like OUI, BUI, uh-huh. biking. What's OUI? Uh, operating under influence. I think that's for like that boats. For, for chairlifts, forklifts. And maybe, yeah. I got like an hour conversation. Voting people, like, oh yeah less cool yeah you can get uh, so a bunch of kids in my high school got like in a fuck ton of trouble because they got like all pulled over when they were like hammered on a boat dude everybody who's driving boats is drunk dude you know they you know the coast guard can just board your boat at, at any time they want with no like with nothing really at any time Really? They, can just, they can just walk on the boat. That's kind of sick. I remember when I was younger, uh, we were on some kid's boat and we got pulled over because there was a bunch of kids on the boat and they were like, uh, how many life jackets? Because you have to have a, you have to have one life jacket for every person. That's like the rule. Uh-huh. And we had one life jacket and the kid just kept on pulling the same life jacket out and putting it back in. <laughs> <laughs> like, this one. Yeah, okay, one. This two. one. <laughs> and they totally fell for it. Really? Yeah. They're like, all right, thanks guys. <laughs> That's a fucking That's awesome. It's move. scary though, dude, being out there and all of a sudden you see like the boats coming from multiple different, it feels like the Somalian pirates, dude. Yeah. It's it, fucked. It is cool though that, or that's just definitely a rule that was made like when things were way different. Yeah. That's like a rule from the 1700s when everybody was just on boats and like yeah. the Coast Guard had to protect against yeah. like smuggling and shit. Yeah. It's like old gun rules. It's like rules that were made when you were to like load a rifle for like 90 seconds before oh, yeah, you could yeah, shoot yeah, it or yeah, some yeah. shit like that. Uh, yeah, they they weren't planning for people to just be like whipping around on a fucking uh, like a cigarette boat. boat yeah. yeah, just like fucking yeah. getting shit faced on a thirty rack. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. Every boats. single person, and on they're a boat all is drunk, wasted. dude. That's the only point to go. That's like the best part about going on a boat. That's why you go on a boat. Yeah. Imagine just going sober, being sick. I haven't been on a boat in years. I would love to. Do you love boats? Uh, kind of. I don't. I don't love them as much as some I, people as I love used to. them. My wife loves boats. She's yeah. always just trying to get on. Girls the fucking love boats. But why do girls love, girls love boats, boats so much, dude? I don't know, but they do. They're obsessed with boats. They're always just trying to get on a boat, take a picture of themselves on a fucking boat. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I honestly like just going to the beach more. Yeah, yeah. I never was even on boats till I was fucking in a relationship. Dude. Yeah, I fucking wasn't even. I didn't even wind up on boats. One of my buddies from home had a boat, and we used to go on that. We'd go fishing a lot, which was really fun. But I do uh, not fuck with ferries. I'm not trying to take a ferry. Ah, uh, I don't mind ferries. They're pretty like they're not bad at all. I actually. mind them. Why? I don't like. What them. is going on? It's like oh. New York is bumping, brother. Did people like uh, shouldn't have speakers that loud? That should that should be illegal. Yeah, they should. You were they should have suppressors. Um, <laughs> you are old. You have nowhere to the go. The whole fucking dude. building is shaking. You're going to have to have a reverse Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that can't even be enjoyable. You it's see those no, people, oh, it's definitely not. You see those people driving by and their whole car is like vibrating. It's just. Maybe dude, they're you, deaf folks. You can't hear any words. It's from like the, the song. The de- when deaf people go to a concert and they just want to like stand by the speaker to like feel the vibration uh, yeah. of the music. I haven't been to a concert in years either. You haven't? I've only been to like two concerts in my lifetime. You should have hit the fucking Loomies. 
She I know. Have, I can't believe have. you I would ran back the show, that. Owen. I know. It ruled. So I went Friday night uh, with some friends, and then a couple of them went out after, and we're fucked up and just bought tickets to run it back. And then we weren't going to... More people got tickets, did it. It was great. I might do that more often. I liked doing both shows. Yeah, that's fun. How far away was that from your home? Uh, 20 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Did Forest you... Hills is awesome. Yeah, that's I don't know anything it's like about my it. favorite venue. Uh, old like tennis stadium in Queens, but uh, so it's, it's a, all like a, Tudors. A circle, it's circle? like an old English feeling neighborhood. It's oh, cool. Really? Yeah. They bring out Phoebe Bridgers? Mm-hmm. Phoebe came out. Bon Are you Jovi. serious? No. Phoebe Bridgers was there Phoebe a few Bridgers. weeks ago. Yeah, but yeah, but I heard that like she brought out the Lumineers or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, Damn. I heard the Lumineers were there at her concert, something like that. Mm. Shout out to Phoebe Bridgers. Pretty crazy that those people can do. They do like Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan. What What's crazy about it? That they do three different shows that can sell them all out. You're saying? Yeah. yeah. Are like, you in the same Are you place. equating yourself to the Lumineers? No, but it's just like wild. Like I feel like they could just do Dude, like they that did would really be exhausting. More than one burrow? I mean, do you think the Lumineers could do MSG? Could I could I have done that? <laughs> you probably could have done it too. Do you think the Lumineers could do MSG? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do? Yeah. I feel like anybody can do MSG these days, dude. Pop Punk will probably be. No, this, <laughs> this was a big debate in our apartment. A huge debate about this. About what? Whether Pop Punk could do MSG? No, about when Dave came <laughs> on our podcast. Hating. When Dave came on our podcast and said that he could sell out MSG. Uh, and we were saying not even a chance. Why not? Dude, there's like five comedians. I was more in more in the middle, closer to Harry. Dude, no, dudes. don't don't act like that now because we're talking about it on the podcast. You were 100 percent on my side. I was 100 percent on his side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and this isn't a shot at Dave. It is a little bit, but it is. Well, he just he doesn't have that kind of show. No, he doesn't have a live show. But I think that uh, people could buy tickets out of curiosity, and there's definitely like twenty like thousand tickets. But that's max. There's, there's definitely twenty thousand. Like there's definitely a fucking like I don't know how many. I think you'd have like a how better chance. You think are in the greater Met? I think you'd have a better I chance bet of he selling could out like sell the out garden. TD Garden. Yeah, you'd have a better chance selling out the Garden than he would MSG. The Garden is Madison Square Garden. You're going you to the Garden. Fuck. The Garden. I was calling it TD Garden. You said the garden. You said though. the garden. Oh, I meant TD Garden. It's yeah. Not, it's Boston. not fucking the garden, bro. It's a garden. It's but not the garden. We looked it up. There's like five comedians ever, or maybe like 10 who have ever sold out MSG. Well, fucking you, you uh, underestimate the, the power of Saturdays are for the boys, brother. And, and no offense to Dave, but all the people that have done it are legitimately A-list celebrities. Like it, it would be humbling. Names. It would be humbling if he tried to do that and not a lot of people showed up. Yeah, trying to sell tickets. They bumped him sure. down to the Hulu theater. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Tough, oh, he could sell oh. the Hulu theater, probably. Maybe Radio City. I, I, I just think Radio it's, City. It's hard to n not do live stuff and then just assume you can sell out one of the biggest venues for comedy. Yeah, in the world. Even Radio City is a massive venue. Now yeah, that I'm thinking about it. Radio City is like seven thousand, I think, and it feels so fucking big, yeah. dude. It's just deep ass. And he just go up there and be like, "Well, I don't know." Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't. You can't just go. Big catch fat. Yeah, like you're just trying. To play what are you the gonna hits. do on stage for an hour with nothing prepared in you front of twenty thousand people? It would be hilarious. He would just like bring out like Smitty and Nate and be like, "You fucking idiots!" Yeah, the Dukes crowd would go crazy. Dukes on the other hand was like, "Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent." Like he could sell it out in minutes. Dukes like, I think he'd have to add shows. <laughs> You'd have to do a matinee. Yeah. Three shows on Thursday, three shows on Friday. Dude, let's talk about Allbirds. Allbirds. Shout out to Allbirds, dude. Dude, I didn't know Allbirds. We were in Chicago this past weekend. Allbirds has like brick and mortar stores, dude. Really? Yeah, I saw that. They went in Austin, I think. That's fucking yeah. dope, dude. Allbirds is, uh, it's got to be the fact that people are buying them from the pot, dude. It's a, a truly yeah, lightweight. Single handedly us. <laughs> yeah, we are fucking putting Allbirds on our back, dude. I can't believe they started opening up stores after the fucking. They're about to have us come through like when Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston sell their tequila at local <laughs> tequila shops. <laughs> She's going to have a pop-up shop at Allbirds. Allbirds is a footwear company that cre creates shoes that are made from natural materials that's better for you and better for the planet. That's that's better for you and better for the planet. I don't know about the verb agreement with the subject right there, but they're lightweight, super springy, and wildly comfortable shoes making your long-distance running efforts feel surprisingly less 
surprisingly effortless. That's the Tree Flyer sneaker. Unbelievable cushion and comfort. Minimal, versatile, effortless, everyday style. Harry, talk to these motherfuckers. Spit some fucking facts about our dogs at Allbirds for these people, dude. The revolutionary swift foam midsole is super lightweight and big on cushion and energy return. Yes, sir. So you get a welcome spring with every... You get a welcome spring with every step. The external mm. heel counter provides a more balanced and stable ride, making it easy to find your pace. They are comfortable shoes. They feel very, very comfortable. effortlessly comfortable. comfortable. Lace up the tree flyer and get running today at allbirds.com. That is A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S.com. If I, if I run, I'm running in fucking Allbirds. They oh, recreated yeah. the magic of the 2014 Nike Roshi Run. <laughs> yeah, they brought back, Something they I've been stole looking the for. designer for the, yeah. for the Roshi Run. And they they fucking kidnapped his it feels ass. Feels like you're in socks with the with the stability of a soul. It's great. It's fucking incredible, dude. It's, the, <laughs> it's my number one airplane shoe. It's my number one shoe for fucking taking off my. It's just like two Advans on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Benzo of shoe of footwear. <laughs> All birds. That I was in the Delta Lounge coming back from uh, Chicago, and there was someone who took off their shoes and socks in the Delta Lounge, dude. Oh, I get taken disgusting. off. You can take off your shoes on a very long flight. If you're going over an ocean, fine. Take off your shoes. Get comfortable. If it's an overnight or red-eye flight, sure, you want to sleep. You feel like you can't sleep with something constricting your feet. You're in the fucking Delta Lounge, dude. They should be firing squatted, dude. They should be waterboarded 180 times consecutively yeah, for doing shit like that's that. That's disgusting. That shit's fucking nasty, dude. I'm trying to eat some fucking watered-down hummus and a fucking repurposed like little chicken salad or whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to fucking enjoy my, my Michelob Ultra without having to look at your fucking fucking feet in the delta lounge dude yeah it's really gross uh, i don't get the socks why would you have to why take the, the socks, socks dude? Off? why are you taking your socks off and uh, there was like a little alcove they were next to the printer dude imagine if you had to print something out and you're fucking smelling someone's stinky stinky ass feet dude yeah it's disgusting my feet don't stink though they sweat but they don't stink mine don't smell at all really no it's fucking sick i think i feel like people go through waves of their feet stinking well, I do feet stink. It's got to be some kind of bacteria. It's we're some sort of like, ge- it's got to be some sort of genetic thing. Cause I feel like, but I feel like I've had, even like Mike used to have stinky ass feet for a while. He used to have to like leave his shoes outside. He probably still does. No, I don't think he yeah. does as Gout. much anymore. I'm a stinky Gout. footer. Are you? You got yeah. stinky feet? I run through sneakers. Ew, dude. Really? Even the ALDs? How many pairs of ALDs are you on? The 550s? Three. Holy fuck, dude. They get stinky, man. You're just ripping through them? Yeah. That's how that's how the vintage is supposed to work, though. They get stinky faster. <laughs> the ALDs, dude. The acid washing, washed, or whatever. Are these Aged. new? They don't smell like someone's asshole. They must be new. They must be. Yeah, they must have rotated them out. Shout out to the tech department. Yeah, fuck yeah. We've whatever every- happened to studios? They told us we were going to... Yeah. That's just, I don't know. I guess it's just not happening. Somehow we're in the- Everyone's in the, getting their own studio. Yeah, boards studio. would be nice. Oh, yeah. No. That would be sick if we got boards. What are we going over a year of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> They're coming though. They'll be here soon. They'll be here yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Boards. And that's going to change everything. Loud Sean's just got him at his house right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating dinner off him. Yeah. He's using them as TV trays. Uh, um, um, I'm going to do a quick plug, shamelessly. I'm going to be in Philly, St. Louis, Providence, Atlanta this summer. Um, I'll have the links in my bio on Instagram and Twitter. I That's think. not helpful, dude. What dates? Well, you'll be able to see on the link, but I'll be in Philly uh, the 19th and 20th of July. Are, uh, I mean, I are we all going to come to that one? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Am, I, am I allowed to come? That's, a, that's midweek, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me come to that. I'll Maybe come to- sprinkle a little boy dad into it. Yeah, maybe. I'll come. Bump mics with Roan at the end. That would be so fucking sick. Should yeah, we we'll plan figure some, something out. Should we plan some fucking little pick and roll action, bro? Should we plan some fucking bits, dude? We could shoot that uh, sketch. You and Roan can do it. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know. I don't want to plan too much ahead. What's the sketch? We sew your asshole shut and yeah. feed you yeah. until you explode? Yeah. That would be fucking hilarious, bro. Um, But yeah. All right. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> I need to stress you out. <laughs> Did that just stress you? No, uh, a little bit. Go back, read your di- read your little dates. No, I already read them. It's fine. Okay. Um, sure? I asked. I texted Owen. I said, "Can I can I help you guys shoot sketches, dude?" I'm trying. I to know. Shoot yeah, stuff. I know. Yeah, you should. 
I want to help shoot stuff. I enjoy shooting the t- uh, Tommy stuff. Yeah, that's, I want to start editing shoot. more stuff. Dude, those are incredible. They're I fun. admittedly just like binge most of them now. I'd seen the first couple, and then when the party one came out, I watched the rest. They're Tommy's doing funny. some serious numbies too. At the party, they good numbies. It was over 100K, right? Yeah. It, it uh, yeah, it came together well. But it has its own like very unique style, which I think is awesome. Yeah, it would be fun to shoot more stuff. I need to work on, I need to learn how to actually use a fucking real camera though, instead of the rinky dink Disney World camera that I used to make that shit. Yeah, you should just, I mean, I don't think it's that hard. Yeah, it can't be. With I the mean, fucking idiots doing, we have in here fucking yeah. working cameras, dude. Unless you're like doing like what like Obes does or something, I think you'd be pretty fun. At no, doing I would it. try to do the shit that he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, fuck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. He's it's a, like, that's what's wild. Because you wizard. could you could learn how to be as good as everyone here in like two weeks, and then you go on the trip with the mics yeah. and you're like, oh wow. Yeah, they're fucking yeah, they're they're, they're nice with it. They're like doing guys. some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're zooming. Did, he, did they appreciate your guys' B-roll, or were they? Were they? Did they not like it? <laughs> really? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They didn't use Damn. any of them. That's funny as fuck, dude. What B-roll snobs? Yeah. But then and I got fucking time, sniped by Brianna Chicken for I will shooting that. that. Yeah. What happened? She just took a picture of me across the street in the city, like holding a camera to my face, and then. That was it. She didn't say hi. What is it? Wait, when we were shooting, creep. when we were shooting what? <laughs> they had to go shoot B-roll. Oh, oh, when you went around the city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun, though. Damn, she dunked on you? Yeah, she dunked. That's fucked. But I was with her at the Lumineer Saturday. No way. What's that I show they covered? She was, like, kind of near us. <laughs> 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 you saw her. Yeah, I didn't go with her. <laughs> you should have taken a picture of her. <laughs> Put her ass on blast. Yeah, you should have. Join a fucking concert, dude. It must be nice. <laughs> a concert you're at. Must be nice and someone <laughs> bring her up on stage. <laughs> no, but it was yeah, wild. Like stage, she did a guest hey DJ ho. set. Yeah, yeah. As the, her and Shaq were singing "Hey Ho." Like as the headlining band was coming on stage, there were still like little girls coming up freaking out about her, which is wild. It's crazy because it's like the Lumineers are here too. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think a lot of people find they have more of a like personal connection to like internet people than they do the actual Lumineers. That's fair. Yeah, some somebody they watch on TikTok, someone they've seen cry. Yeah, I think I've never do. seen the Lumineers cry. Hell no! How do you not cry when you're singing "Hey Ho"? <laughs> <laughs> I was standing on canal. <laughs> yeah, I know where that is, dude. <laughs> I know where Bowery is, dude. <laughs> it hits way different in New York, dude. Oh, dude. Ho oh, hey, which hits way different. The pasta to Chinatown to, and you just rib your buddy a yeah, little bit. Like, yes, dude, fuck it. Dude, yes. If I was gonna go to a concert again, I'd want to be out in the out in the nosebleeds. Why? I don't like being in front and being in that crowded space, bumping into people. I do not like being in the pit. That's or no. I'll I be remember in the back I used of the pit. to go with all my friends to like we used to go to this festival, Levitate Music Festival in Massachusetts, and uh, it's pretty big. But like they would always be like nudging people to get to the front and stuff, and I'd be like, dude, like. I feel like a dick. That's a girl yeah. behavior to like, go like to the front of a concert. Move. It's also like there; these people got here early, and now we're just like shoving them out of the way. I didn't know how much of a girl behavior that was when he comes out to sing like slower songs, like moms sprint like individually to get as yeah, close as they can to behind. him. Yeah, all these like middle aged drunk moms are better. Hoping through. that, like, yeah, yeah. Also, it was like it was like some of the bands I was a big fan of, so I'd be like, oh, it'd be cool to be up front. But it was like a lot of them. I was like, I don't really know them, and these. People here are like dying to see these guys. They know every word of them in the front. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and I'm just drunker than everyone. I think I was like sober too, which was the worst part. So I was like 16. (laughs) Being sober front row at a concert's tough. Oh, you were 16, so you already knew you were more talented than. than (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll fucking be there someday. (laughs) I just want to see the view from up close. (laughs) No, but it was check out my office before I moved in. I think like Ziggy (laughs) Ziggy Marley was there. And it was like this one dude was like behind me and he was having like the best time of his entire life. And I was like, this guy should be in front of me, man. He deserves it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey man, sit on my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Climb up, man. You deserve this shit. You fucking love the game. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a tough move to get to the front. I want to be in the back where I have enough room to like fucking jam out and dance yeah, with my friends. Yeah, that's the best. Maybe put the bottle on the ground and spin it. Whoever it points <laughs> to you do the dance move. Oh, fuck yeah. I you never done that? that? No. What, dude? You could tell I was just at a wedding. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> Get the fucking tablecloth, play jump rope with it. <laughs> You're definitely a fucking problem at weddings. Oh my God, I'm a fucking menu. Do they kick you out? I'm a menace. No, 
They were, dude. It, <laughs> adults get fucked up at weddings. Yeah. The more the older, wedding. Uh, the older I've gotten, the more exotic the fucking drugs have gotten at every wedding. Really? Like you start off boozing, and then people will start fucking pulling out cocaine and stuff like that. At this wedding, they're like, "This is a chocolate that has MDMA and mushrooms in it." <laughs> I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> you do it? Everybody's on it. No, I was like, I, I you definitely did it. No, I did not. Uh, unfortunately. Damn. I deferred from doing it. KB took some like, MDMA chocolates and he said the city was just red for the day. That's crazy. Yeah. I want to man I always want manageable drug experiences. I'd always rather just be like, this is fucking this is enhancing my life rather than being like, I'm high as fuck right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. that, that sounds miserable. Like my tummy hurts and I need to lay, lie down. Yeah. Like that shit does not sound sweet. No. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to me when when I'll take too much too much drugs. So like being at a concert and be like, I need to go home is like a terrible feeling because like a you want to get out of where you are, and then it's like I've wasted my my like ticket to this, all the anticipation I mm -hmm. had, and now I'm not having any fucking fun yeah. while everybody else is still literally having the time of their yeah. life. I went to a <laughs> Brianna chicken fry is like fucking setting yeah. money on fire, like, yeah. like a maniac, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm at home crying. Yeah, I went to a I went to a slightly stupid concert. Um, after I graduated high school in Maine, because my buddy moved to Maine and I was like super drunk pulling up and I got there and like the, the show hadn't even started yet. And he like lit a joint. And I just like grabbed the joint from him and like took like five big hits and I never smoke weed. And I literally had to go back to like the grass with all like the fucking couples <laughs> who were like having like picnics back there. And I had to go and just lay on the ground. <laughs> There's like families, the the people like blowing bubbles and yeah. you're on all fours. Like, just at their feet, I, I had like to go dog. and just like lay there with my eyes closed for the rest of the show before the show even started. I Laying on the like grass as hours. like the world spins around yeah, you. It was it's a like fucking a, nightmare, dude. I think that a lot of people have probably had that experience to the T. Like yeah. not only like the fact that they're spinning and like going back to the grass, but it was probably always a slightly stupid yeah. concert too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My I think buddy, that should happen to me coming out of high school and yeah, slightly stupid. Yeah. Slightly stupid might be like 80 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. has just always had that exact experience. Yeah. I, I, I remember one of my buddies was, he was so mad at me because he was like, why did you just do that? He's like, why is like you don't smoke weed? He's like, what, what would make you think that was a good idea? And I was like, yeah, I don't know, dude. Well, you're at a concert getting <laughs> fucked up. It's like what? what yeah, but like every time I smoke weed, it's like that reaction. And he was like, that was just like so stupid of you. <laughs> I thought it was like, I thought it looked so sick too. I was like, I'll pass that shit over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just taking the biggest hits ever. Yeah. When people try and take a big hit when they get out of their comfort yeah. zone. Let me get that. Yeah. Just try and fucking crush it. Shit is not sweet. Yak Idol this week. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's just going to be dope as fuck. It's going to be interesting. I wonder. Someone will have already gone home by the time that we're that playing this. this. Out. Also, uh, it's manscaping season. If you're if you're going to the beach, the last thing you want is a tuft of pubes fucking mm -mm. sticking out the top, bottom, or side of your bathing suit. Because you want to be able to pull it down a half an inch to show the V in a group picture. Yeah, you want to be like kind of like swishing it around. Kind of the fucking fellas love to see that. Or you want to be able to hike it up. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. To kind of craft a banana hammock uh, and uh, ma really maximize your bulge situation. Yeah, sort of like and, a three uh, inch inseam. The thing, yeah. yeah, the three inch, uh, inch and a half inseam. The fucking boy <laughs> short inseam. That's what you want to be able to show off. And the last thing you want is fucking a, a, a mane of pubes fucking sticking out. And that's why you need to be manscaping. Manscaping not only your pubic mound, but also your ball sack with the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package is the biggest bundle they've ever offered, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. That's the lawnmower 4.0, the weed whacker, ear, nose, and, ha and hair trimmer, the ultra, pre ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, ultra premium deodorant, crop preserver, anti-chafing ball deodorant. Some of the fellas are fucking chafing their fucking balls. You don't have to go through that. You can no. have a ball deodorant that will will fucking kick that chafy habit for you. Crop Reviver ball toner spray, <laughs> anti-chafing boxers, and the shed travel bag to hold your goods. That's so much fucking shit. That's like a gifting suite at the Super Bowl worth of shit. And that's a Platinum Package 4.0. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code SUN. At manscaped.com. Use code SUN. It's 20% off. Manscaped.com. Use code SUN. Check that shit up. Get get your balls right, dude. 
If you're getting blown by the get ladies, your balls right. the fellas, if a, some fellas are blowing you this summer, dude, give them the treat of having get your balls right. smooth ass <laughs> balls. <laughs> get your balls right. <laughs> <laughs> having some smooth ass balls. Oh, dude, I what was else, wa- bro? What I, else? I was watching a movie called uh, Patton. Patton. Sounds familiar. Patton. Paddington. Patton. Yeah, Patton. Paddington Bear. Yeah. It's about this. No, it's about Patton. It's about this general. Oh, nice. Named George Patton, dude. I didn't realize that fucking woke culture was going back to like the fucking 40s. Oh, yeah. His whole thing that he was like getting in trouble for was like people would have PTSD and uh, at war and he'd be like, you're a yellow belly coward. Yeah. <laughs> Get back on that fucking battlefield. Yeah. I was like, yes, dude. Yeah. We need to go back to that. Yeah. And people, but, but like he got like roasted for it because he like a soldier was like, like shaking, like having the, uh, like some kind of whatever the fuck they call it, shell shock uh, from uh, just like hearing gunshots, being around, seeing everybody die around him. And he just walked into the infirmary and slapped the shit out of the dude being like, I can't have you in bed That's crazy. next to real men who have been wounded. Yeah. And then they made him go in front of the whole army and apologize, dude. That's really? that woke shit, dude. That's crazy. He had to apologize. He note stapped the whole fucking army, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. Pat and I well, to that's apologize. different. I mean, he apologized for being a pussy, right? No, he apologized for slapping the oh, pussy. Oh, really? Yeah, that he he had Damn. to apologize for fucking abusing the guy. They're like taking him off of his post. That's so, crazy. Yeah, I thought that men were men back then. Apparently, yeah. men were pussies then too. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that was a new problem that we were going through right now. The pussification of America has been dating back to the fucking yeah. Dude, the the mid twentieth like century. Speaking of like the woke shit, I was listening to Joe Rogan, uh, like yesterday and today. I was listening to the Soder episode, and then I was listening to the Joe List episode. Uh-huh. And I forget. I think it was on the Joe List episode. He like Joe List is talking about how um how he was listening to some podcast, and this dude was talking about how like it's like privileged for white men to make self deprecating jokes. Something like dumb like that. Like in Joe's, like it was stupid. And then Joe Rogan's like, he's like, that's just the first of it. He's like, in a couple of years, it's going to be, it's going to be white man can't talk. <laughs> and then, you know, it's going to be like, and after that. Then suddenly white man can't jump. No, no. It was like, it was like, and then it's, he's like, and, and then it's white man can't leave their houses. And Joe List is laughing. He's like, I'm not joking. And I was like, fuck, dude. I'm like, I've fuck, always, is this true? You no, know, I was just like, that's fucking insane. Yeah, for him to say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a preposterous yeah, take. Pro- uh, an insane take. Next thing you know, it's gonna be white straight man can't leave their homes. Suddenly we can't be billionaires anymore. Yeah, because it's because because so many people weren't allowed to leave their homes for so long. So now white men can't. And suddenly we're not allowed to get massages from 12-year-old girls anymore <laughs> on our private islands anymore. But yeah. No, nah, they're both very good episodes. That was just that one thing stuck out to me and I was like laughing. I was like, dude, that's fucking insane. It is a problem. Most of the shit that they were saying was like, I get like Joe Rogan has like, a, like he's got all these like stereotypes and stuff, but that one I was like, dude, that is fucking insane. Well, also like- uh, White straight man can't leave their homes. Like the pendulum has swung back. Like it was like in for for a while there was like this apologist period, but it's like no, dude, you're you're Joe Rogan and you're winning more than anybody right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. the biggest mouthpiece for yeah. white dudes of all time. Dude. I also heard this statistic that it was like eighty eight percent of America is not on Twitter, and then ninety percent of people on Twitter don't tweet. That's hilarious. So it's like this, like this, like major like this group of people that everyone is like oh they're gonna ruin the world like they're so woke all this shit it's like it's like no one <laughs> like these people don't exist in real life i know have you ever had a conversation in real life with someone who's saying shit like i think straight white men shouldn't be allowed to leave their house <laughs> it's like no it's some <laughs> random like 16 year old on like tiktok who's like trying to snap yeah yeah like they're trying to like go yeah. off it's like this shit doesn't actually exist in real life i know it is uh it is absolutely preposterous it's insane but when uh, like and, and it really got amplified and people could kind of realize that this is like a viable path to go down to make your online personality when we were all inside. Yeah. And when yeah. we were all online, yeah. like still. And there are some people who like love that time and for who long for that time and want to hold on to all the trappings of like what made that time like define themselves. But like, dude, everybody else went back outside, dude. A lot of people yeah. went back yeah. outside and at least are living their lives. And people are probably still checking Twitter. But like, yeah, I mean, dude, people are just it's over amplification. Twitter is just terrible, right? Like it's like 
I mean, it's just like people are, fu- they, you will log on to Twitter and you see people that are saying like legitimately like the dumbest things you've ever seen in your life that looks like a bunch of people agree with, but it's like no one in the real world. Yeah. Agrees people saying crazy people. shit like the Celtics could have won a fucking final. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, what are these people talking about? dude? I saw like, uh, like, you know, Brandon Mardell. Yes. He did. He posted this like clip from his comedy central, like. I don't know what it was. There's a bunch of comedians that did this, like, con- like you know how they always do, like, those mini specials with, like, a bunch of comedians? Yeah. Um, and his joke, he made a joke about, like, straight white dudes who wear nail polish to get she slash they pussy <laughs> and hilarious. calling them, like, predators. And it was, like, it was so clearly sarcastic, and it's a joke. Like, obviously, he's not, these people aren't actually predators. Like, that's the fucking joke. And it's, like, the comments were insane, dude. That I mean, what were I mean? I can't even imagine what you have, how you could pick that apart. But people just they're like just like they're, shit they're apart. like they're like it's just people being like all stand up comedians need to die, and it's like what like what would make you like genuinely believe like you like have you ever been to a comp like you just don't enjoy laughing? Yeah, like it it's crazy. A, it's just a fucking insane thing to it like, is a preposterous believe. thing to say. And it's like, the thing is, they don't even think that. They just like say shit because they're like, this sounds like the right thing to say right or now. Or this will get dumb up votes. Yeah, yeah. People will fucking really react to this shit. Yeah, They'll I don't flock know. flock to it. I'm like kind of stepping back from Twitter. It's just, uh, it's so bad. Yeah, dude. I haven't really tweeted much in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I, I, dude, Fire I, off some shit here and there. I go on Reddit now, like all the, like religiously. And I just look at like the top popular page and I look at like videos of like bears fighting squirrels and shit. That's mm-hmm. so like the best form of social. It's the way best way to. fulfilling. Too. Yeah. Trying to learn shit's way fucking sweet. Yeah. Dude, I learned Rather something. than seeing like these people with legitimately the worst opinions of all time. And or just like being rewarded for having bad yeah, opinions. Yeah. Not that there's not bad opinions on Reddit, but uh Oh, there's definitely bad opinions on Reddit too, but it's like I don't know any like I don't like they don't have profile pictures, they're all fucking robots. Dude, I learned some crazy shit. Uh that fucking uh I was learned I was listening to this podcast about like soft power and it was talking about the Saudi Arabian shit and how uh they were uh, using this golf tournament as a way to like sports wash their image where it's like there, it was like soft power where it's like, oh, you don't think of Saudi Arabia for their uh, human rights violations. You think about Saudi Arabia because they're throwing on a, like a golf tournament. Yeah. And they're like another example of a country that did this. They said that the reason that there's so much Thai food in America is that 30 years ago that Thailand was like, we want to fucking change our image. We're just going to put pad Thai on every fucking corner of the United really? States. <laughs> and there was really? just like a directive by their government where they're like, we're going to fucking have Thai food everywhere. Like nobody's Smart. going to fucking hate us. Yeah. Like Thai, you'd probably think of Thailand as one of the biggest couple countries in like uh, Asia. And there's like countries that are like, you never, you never are like thinking about like Indonesian food. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. As as there is a disproportionate amount of, of Thai, Thai restaurants. There's yeah. Thai food there's everywhere. So much Thai food Because people are York. just crushing dunk, drunken noodles. Yeah, like, it's unreal. Yeah, they could pad do thai is my favorite meal by a mile. It's so good, yeah. and it's and they're literally like intentionally putting their like slop fast food yeah. on our corners. So we're like, dude, we got to go to fucking Thailand. Dude. Yeah, it's unreal. We got to go fuck a lady boy, dude. Yeah. This, <laughs> this spicy basil rice is incredible. Yeah. It's really good. It's genius that they did that. Though. Yeah, that's smart. I never, I didn't, I never heard of that. Or you just would never think of like, why is this cuisine yeah. like super pre- prevalent? Like, it makes sense that Chinese food is everywhere because like there's fucking two billion. Chinese people. So that's yeah. like a proportionate amount of Chinese food. Yeah, but, like, but no, yeah, there is. And I didn't even think my uh, absurd amount of Thai there's food. There's Thai food everywhere. And it's like, there's not even that many. Like, yeah. I had a Thai restaurant in my town growing up and it was frankly Thai. It was a big fat Italian guy, Frank, and his <laughs> Thai wife. And they ran the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. I had only had Thai food once ever before I came to New York and now I have it like at yeah, least we- once a week. Dude, all cultural food, like there's nothing spooky about any cultural food because the cultural food that's making it to America to be mass produced is delicious. Like once you start eating Indian food, you don't stop eating Indian food. No, yeah, it becomes a problem though, where it's like, I'm, I'm, I, 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 you're bad with it. He like only eats. I don't eat. uh, Like I only eat foreign food, and then I'm like, I'm like, I haven't had like a fucking sandwich in like a year. You haven't had American kill. food. Oh, fucking Jesus. God. Dang. Is that a ghost, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I no, think that was a kicked, fucking ghost, dude. the wire. Because I haven't moved. <laughs> I haven't moved in a, in a full hour. And that but shit just fucking happened. I, uh. That was a ladyboy ghost. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I fucking, yeah, dude. I haven't had like a, just like a, just like a BLT. 
Yeah, like no, a you get sandwich. like bowls of tikka masala delivered at 11 p.m. Yeah, they're so fucking good. Dude, well, the, you are in the right place to like have wildly different food. Yeah, like easy. I need to get more into Ethiopian food. I saw like there's like Uyghur mus, uh, Uyghur restaurants yeah. like of like Uyghur food. I didn't even. I don't even know what Uyghur food is. No, chicken tikka masala is so fucking good, but yeah, it's it so bad for Dude, you. Dude, I'm more of a korma guy, bro. You you don't fuck with chicken korma? I've never had it. I don't think I like korma better than masala. I just like the masala with the naan. Deep, yeah, deep anything that. you could just have a vehicle of carbs to eat. Yeah, here, the rest of the food is good. It's well, incredible. the the I, dude, it's so bad. Yeah, I looked it up and it was like I was like, is chicken tikka? Because I was eating it when we were at our old apartment in Hell's Kitchen. I was eating it like nightly because you think it's healthy. Because I was like, like oh, it's just it's like chicken, grilled chicken with yeah. the sauce. Yeah, it's just grilled. I also chicken. Assume you know that it, sauce is butter it's and just milk. Yeah, anything butter. that's not bar food is good for me. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was like I looked it up and I was like, is chicken tikka masala good for you? And it was just like, no. <laughs> It is bad for Don't you. Don't bother asking it any is more straight questions. Straight butter. Yeah, it's just buttery. I mean, like they. they, they and I would be like, I would eat the grilled chicken, and then I would dip the naan in the sauce, and then I would pour the rice into the sauce <laughs> and eat that. I was eating all the sauce. You figure it you was like it had sauce. to have been like eight thousand calories. Yeah, it's probably multiple sticks of butter <laughs> yeah. and the heaviest, yeah. fattiest cream. Yeah, because it's a thick, creamy sauce. Like yeah. this shit is not thin. No, and it's it's so fun. But dude, good. there's also like Indian food menus go so deep. Like mm -hmm. you could ha you could order like the most random like fucking the longest name on the menu and it'll be like some kind of like ginger tomato spice chicken that'll yeah. fuck your shit up because oh, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, dude. Indian food's incredible, and there's just tons of good ass food out here, dude. I need to I need to expand my palate in this bitch. I know. Yeah. Take neighborhood eats overseas, maybe. Yeah, take it to India or just go to different neighborhoods in New York. Be significantly easier. That is true. Or I could go to oh, India. Yeah. We'll go to India. We'll go to India. My bad. We'll go to India. Yeah. We'll go to what's what's some Swiss food? Swiss chocolate? Ooh, cheese. Go, go to the uh, go to have some go Swiss to the cheese. Toblerone factory. Swiss cheese is uh the worst cheese. Though. Yeah, it sucks. Swiss really? cheese does suck. Dude. I hate it. I don't, I don't like really it. like cheese. I have never been like I've never been like, oh, I have a favorite cheese. That sounds poor. No, I just don't like I, I like I really don't fuck with any cheese like that. I, I fuck with cheese heavily, but I think like Swiss, I don't put Parmesan on my pasta or anything like that. You don't put extra cheese on. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't put any cheese on my pasta. Interesting. I hate it. What do you like about about Swiss? You like Swiss, like yeah, a I ham like, and Swiss uh, or something like? Or like yeah, Swiss? ham and Swiss is good. I ham and Swiss. I used bad. to do Swiss on burgers. I don't do that anymore. I guess maybe with like a mushroom or some shit. Like yeah, that. like mushroom and Swiss. On What's a your burger? burger? Cheese. Yeah, straight up. Straight up, yeah, just a cheeseburger straight up. American. We had some cracked burgers in uh, in that. Did you have any of that burger in Milwaukee? Yeah. That place was yeah. so good. What was it called? Dairy Dairy Land. Yeah, that place was fucking incredible. Those burgers were fucking. Oh man, Milwaukee has good food. They They're probably have great cheese, right? Yeah. Oh, the cheese was fucking incredible, dude. You would if you had had some of these cheese curds, you'd be cheese curds. Oh well, those looked really good. You'd actually. be singing a different tune. About cheese, I was so happy I wasn't there, dude. <laughs> I just, dude, I felt so, so was I. Bro. No, I like I wanted. I was to bummed. Be there. I missed it. Actually. I was. I wanted to be there for like the good times, but dude, I I was felt so shitty, and I was like, I can't eat this much food this week. I I think it would have killed me. I would have been back in Denver right now. Really? Yeah. You would have been <laughs> on packing Zoom. Up your bags. I was so tired, dude, and I was like, if I had to walk around and just stuff my face with cheese curds. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude it, it gets so that that hot. shit gets exhausting. It really does. Yeah. By the last place, dude, it's... by like the second, like by the second place, you're fucking stuffed. I know. And they're like, all right, we got six more places today. Now you you used to do it two days, and you now you shoot them all one, right? Yeah, because you can't. We're doing a couple fewer that much. fewer places. Yeah. Um, How was Tommy? He was hilarious, bro. Really? He was fucking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking back about it now. He had something yeah. every moment. We go to Tommy. We kick the ball to Tommy. He's fucking splashing shots. That's it. He went 12 for 12 from three, dude. Good Filled for out him, the man. stat sheet. A guy awesome. like him, he's just happy to be there too. He's just like a delight. He's just so so appreciative. I will yeah. say, going on those trips is very fun. Why? Because just the boys, yeah, the dogs, the fellas, yeah. It's just being like part of the team. Yeah, it's Busting a good time. Balls. It's always it's like a being blast. in the locker room. You're in just the locker room. Sometimes it can shit. destroy me as a man when that lady is feeding me fucking clown cash or whatever it was called. Clown cash, clonche, clonche, kolaches, kolaches by the fucking hand. Klobosniks, klobosniks. Yeah, they were fucking loading. They were shoving it down our gullets. It was so good. But should it was be a new so one coming out this food. week. Uh, pastrami in New York. Sass was in that bitch for just a little bit. 
Uh, the second episode of The Nicest is out on YouTube now. Check that out. Uh, or it's coming out today, Monday, but it'll be out time tomorrow. This is out, this is out now. Um, there's going to be a, uh, more vlogs coming out. Oh, yeah. We got a gang on of vlogs. On Sass's out. channel from Behind Neighborhood Eats, Behind the Nicest. We need to get this shit to 100K. We need to stop playing. We got our little dicks in our hands. Yeah. Fucking playing around. Like, we need to get. This was a good episode. Fucking, oh, this episode was fucking this cracked. Is fucking yeah. yeah. This is fucking incredible. I'm in the flow state right now, dude. I know. We, how long have we been going? An hour and a half? I feel like Rafael Nadal when he's playing tennis. I'll tell you when it's an hour and a half. Well, I think we're wrapping up right now, right? <laughs> oh, I see. Hour and a half. Let's go, okay. dude. All right, should we end the show? Yeah, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, give us five stars, all that jazz. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Um.